to give you an idea of what the dashboard looks like on Showcase IDX, which is the IDX program currently running on redwagonteam.com. Uh, I just added this fake buyer here, Fred Flintstone. Um, he, of course, lives with Barney and Wilma. And they all live in Bedrock, but I just made up a name, an email, uh, my phone number. When the lead comes in off the website, it goes into new. I have an action plan that starts running and it immediately sends them a text message and uh, starts a little campaign. So what an agent would do, they'd come in, they check this, they click on this, and they would see what properties they're looking at. I'm not sure what will happen now because there is no properties in this uh, dummy account here that I set up. And each of these little areas here are, um, when you click on them, it would sort through. So there's, if they made a comment on something, a message would be a showing request. They have a way to react to uh, the property. I'll show you what that looks like on the front end. And then they could favor it this way. And then this would be a save search. I usually create those for everybody. So we're going to click on Fred here. Let's see if it loads Fred. It does. He has no properties because, well, Fred's not real. And um, he hasn't looked on the property. But over here, even though it has a tag section and a note section, I don't recommend leaving notes here or tagging because you can't search these two columns at Showcase IDX. So uh, let me see if I've got an open account here. Uh, let me pause this. Okay, so if this was Fred, this is Jimmy Fang, whoever he is. Um, when I open up his account, he's looked at 19 properties there is one saved search. I'll show you how that works in a minute. These are all the properties that he's currently looking at. And as you scroll down, you'll see the price range here is 21 million for eight bedrooms. These are mansions. I can tell right away because um, I rank really high in the search engines for mansions in different cities. So here's Bel Air, here's Hollywood Hills, here's Beverly Hills, here's Malibu. Uh, Valencia, Encino, uh, Pacific Palisades, and so on. And so uh, I'm going to open up one of these. Let's pick, um, I don't know, let's pick the Malibu property here so I can show you what that looks like. But uh, this is what he's looking at right here. The save search is something I created um, in a section right here. It says new save search, and I can adjust it there. I created it for everybody. So I make up the name for them. And then if you get in contact with them and need to edit, you would just click edit. You would come in here and maybe they only want to get uh, listings um, instantly, daily, weekly, monthly, or never. You can change that. And then you'd hit the save button down below. Or if they didn't want Los Angeles, they wanted other counties, you could just type in, let's say they wanted Orange, for Orange County, the City of Orange, Orange Park Acres, and you would just click on Orange, and then that'll update all of Orange County as well. And you can see what they're looking at here is 900,000 to 7 million, five bedrooms, four baths. Um, if you click on additional filters, you'll see I put it for 3,500 square feet and above. Mansions are 8,000 square feet and above. And you can make all kinds of adjustments. Here's the advanced search. So you have all these tabs here. You have general tabs. And you can click on any of these tabs here. Let's say we went to style. Let's say Jimmy wanted uh, a craftsman style property. When I click on that, it's going to immediately filter only the craftsman style properties with all the 3,500 square feet and above and in this price range that he was searching in. If he doesn't want that and he wanted a uh, mid-century modern, you can click on that and that would narrow the list there. And then you would just simply hit save to change uh, the parameters. So only when a mid-century modern came up that had 3,500 square feet and above up to 7 million with these parameters, then he would, he would get a listing emailed to him. And there are over 300 different features that you could really customize it 
and make it look awesome. So if you wanted a fireplace, you could hit yes, and then all the properties that had a fireplace would appear. And didn't really change it. Let's see if we put no. That changed the list a little bit. Uh, and then exterior features. So let's say he wanted a view. And you have all these different views. These are all different features in the MLS. So the ocean view would go ahead and only show you the ocean view properties with all these parameters. Um, if you went to the next section over, see so it's one of 24 here. So we go to the next group. We have all these different, maybe there's a panoramic view that he really wanted. You could change that. And then you would scroll down, hit save, and it would save the search so the next listings come up have to fit all the parameters. It would re really narrow down his search. If it was community features, let's say that he wanted to be in a senior community. I don't know of any 3,500 square foot homes in a senior community. We're going to click yes here. And as we scroll down, there is nothing. So we don't have to click no, we just leave it alone. Back to the community features, you talk about pets, security, building features. If they needed an elevator inside the uh, house, oh, that didn't work out. But you might find that feature, let's see, like interior. You might find that in one of these other locations. Maybe it's an interior here, elevator. So that was under community elevator, which would be like an association or a condo building. Here for a house, these are all the properties with an elevator. So there's lots of ways to really filter through and create an uh, awesome experience for a visitor that's searching for properties in Southern California. And so uh, status is always really sent to active because um, coming soons are not available through the IDX system from our MLS. And so that's not available here in this section here. I'm not even sure what I've done here. Let's get rid of orange because that wasn't there originally. Then I go back to save. And then once it says saved here, it will take effect. And when I hit on this person's name, it goes back to their account. They have a new search here in this section here. Now we have saved listings, we have comments, reactions, and then hidden listings. So when they're looking at a listing on the website, this picture here in the background is just a general picture. It doesn't reflect the actual view of this home from Malibu. And then um, this little thing pops up right now showing who recently registered. So that's the title of the property here. These are all the pictures of the property down below. Can scroll through them this is what a consumer would do they can ask a question they can schedule a tour when they go down further uh, let's say they want to write a comment they could write a comment here hit post and it saves it to their account on the website they could hit the reaction tool and they could say love it it's going to cause them to register but they could rate it uh, with all these different emojis makes it kind of fun they could invite one of their friends let's say they had a, a friend in Idaho or somewhere they could type in their email address and hit send invitation and they would get an invitation to help with the search so if they fell in love with the property it's another way of doing it and then a comment you can make a comment here and then you can make it private I think I'll bold that a little bit private so only the people with access to that account can see it and I as an agent would not be able to see it or you can make it visible to me the happy real estate agent or you the happy real estate agent so that's how it goes and then this is just additional data so when they sign up they get to see all the additional data within a listing on redwagonteam.com and so that's how that's set up and so what happens is as soon as they register, the lead is transferred into a product called Follow-Up Boss. It's not part of the Showcase IDX platform. And Follow-Up Boss is a way to manage leads more effectively. 
I'm the only one using Follow Boss other than a lender who's trying to help out. And this would be the name of the person, their phone number that they entered, their current email address, the average price that they're searching in will appear here, uh, when it was created, when the account was created, what was the last email that was sent to them, uh, when it was updated, their last visit, and whether they're inactive or active. So here's what I like about it. I'm going to open up this guy named Paul Chen. He's in China right now. And I'm in communication with Paul. He's not ready to go look at property because he's in China. But uh, over on the right-hand side, every communication I sent, so I send an email, a text message, or I log a call, all appear right here in the notes. If an agent is not using this system, I have no clue what they're doing. And I find you're going to be really ineffective if you don't have this system running. And it's really in a, a sub-account to my main account. It costs 70 bucks a month. And then that way you and I can both chime in on it and make the experience for the consumer a lot easier. If you're on vacation, I can do some follow-up. If you're following up with them, you write your notes in here, what you talk to them about. Uh, visiting uh, US, visiting Huntington Beach in 2024. And then you would, or 2023, and then you get create note, send an email. You just click on send email, type a subject, and um, the message. And then your your picture would pop up here, not mine, but if you want to send that, that's great. Text message. This is a company uh, phone number, and their phone number. Uh, we don't have Paul's phone number because he's in China, but his phone number would appear here, and you can send a text message with an emoji if you're really excited about using an emoji or a picture or whatever else you wanted to do and with the and then when you log a call you can call him if his phone number was there there would be a section here where you could write in here no answer voicemail or bad number um, and then what I like about it is this section over here which we're going to look at on another account uh, this is activity on the website this does not appear in this section So here's Fred, uh, or this this buyer here. I have no idea. If they don't log back in, I have no idea what they're looking at. But when I use Follow-Up Boss, it records everything that they're doing over here and gives me an address and an average of different things. So it's a good talking point here. So we're going to look at this doctor here who's been on the website for a while. And um, they have a phone number, so when you hit log, you can see no answer, left voicemail, bad number, uh, texting, whatever I've texted to them last, emails, and so on. But over here, you can see their average uh, price is $2 million. They're looking in these two zip codes. One is San Clemente, and I don't know where this one is. It must be Laguna Niguel or Rancho Santa Margarita. And these are the properties. So this person looked at 234 properties. But if I go into her account on Showcase IDX, it doesn't show that. Because in order for it to show that, she'd have to re-log in. So the benefit of using Follow-Up Boss is I actually see what they're looking at. If they looked at like 24 Gaston Place, I can right-click, open it in a tab. And I believe this is in Bear Brand. Bear Brand? Brand? Ranch, if I remember correctly, down Laguna Niguel for almost $2 million. And so now I know what they're looking at. But if I don't have follow a boss, I have no clue what they're looking at. So that one's currently in escrow. That's not going to help us any. But if it was active, we know what's going on with it. But if you don't have follow up boss, you have no clue. Your ability to follow up with leads drops like a rock. You can say, well, I'm calling him every week. It doesn't matter because you don't have this activity panel at all anywhere. And if you get a separate follow up boss, it doesn't record at all. The way it records there is it's under my account. And if we go back to the website here, 
Let's go back to the home page here. I don't know if it's on pop up, but usually a phone number pops up right here. I have this thing here, but there's a phone number that pops up right in this section here, and that records everything they're doing on the website. So it, and I'm always testing something, this little test that's going on over here, but it records everything. So I know the doctor, even though she didn't log back in, these are all 234 properties she's looked at. And from a sales point of view, this is how you actually make a sale as you're able to talk about the different ones. May she looked at Surfside uh, Colony Beachfront Homes. So that's on row A. There's a row A, B, and C in Surfside, California, which is south of uh, Seal Beach and west of Huntington Beach. It's kind of weird. A little strip of homes right here. And she was looking at beachfront properties. And you've got a little table of contents, row A, B, and C, the sign getting into the gate. It's a gated community, and so she had to be looking at this only uh, row B. So 6B Surfside is listed for $3 million, and that's what she was looking at. So it's just a way of following up with people. But again, if you have, you don't have this account under my account, you'll never see this information and your effectiveness as a real estate agent will drop. You could say you could call them every week forever. It's not going to make any difference at all. So that's the purpose of following up with Fred or Jimmy or whoever's on the website. Let's stop.